Uh, hey y'all, are you hearing these words? Are you hearing the words I'm saying at the front of my face? Uh, hey y'all, are you hearing these oh, words? Oh, you sure are. Okay, great. Um, so I was playing some music, and it's not coming through for some reason. I don't know what that is. Uh, OBS was bouncing up and down like it was hearing the music, and it was pointed to the correct thing, and, uh, I, I, I don't know. I guess, uh, I guess no one just wants to hear this. We're, we're just gonna go ahead and start. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all those who do not feel represented by an oppressive gender binary, uh, my name is Christy, and uh, you are gonna watch me play some games. I think. Is that what we do here? Yeah, that's what we do here. I'm gonna play games. You're gonna watch it. We're gonna talk together. It's all gonna be a good time. They are all technically video games, because they all have video computer components, although the first game we're playing is a fun card game called Magic the Gathering. Let me hit the button so I can bring up Magical the Gathering. Um, one of these buttons does that. Surely. There we go. I'm gonna hit this one, too. Oh, uh, let me know if this music starts coming out, too, because you should be hearing, a uh, Kitten Heaven Abstraction, which is to say Kitten Heaven by Abstraction. Music is coming through there. I don't know what that deal is. Now, whatever. Let's just ma let's just uh, make that move. So, we're in Magic: The Gathering Arena, like we have been uh, every other week. There's drafts all the time now. Uh, they they've added actually a lot of game modes. Just OBS misreading the previous scene. Oh right, like sometimes when uh, Annie and I are playing Paladins, it doesn't pick me up until she actually goes to the game screen. That's fun. Uh. So they had an update, a big update, uh, sometime last week, and it uh, added a bunch of stuff. Uh, normally it's just quick constructed, and then it was so big that it added a whole three new game modes uh, in perpetuity. Quick constructed, which is, uh, you know, you build a deck, you get into it. Then competitive constructed, which is the same thing, except you play two out of three uh, for that, so sideboarding is actually a thing. Uh, and then the same drafts the same things, but in draft format. And, uh, so they're always on time. Stretch out the chat box so it's a little easier to read. I can do that. Uh. I think I can do that. There we go. So try some, try some letter words in there. That should be a little bit bigger. Words and letters, and eh, they're, they're bigger. I can read them on here. They should be relatively fine. So let's get into this. We're going to do a quick draft. So drafts you have to buy in for, uh, for either 5,000 gold currency, which is not, it's not much. Uh, you can make that over the course of a week if you're playing every day. Or buy 750 gems. That's their, uh, their you know, premium currency, like you get. It's going to be a free-to-play app. Uh, what do you want? They're going to have a fucking currency. Each gem is $100. Thankfully, that's not true. Well, let me uh, have a look real quick. In the interest of full disclosure, how much are gems? You can get 750 gems, which is exactly enough to buy into a draft for $4.99, uh, which I have done before, but uh, I've earned the gems I have currently by saving up gold and then playing in draft events. Uh, you can see down here, if you don't win anything if you just turf all three of your matches you get 50 gems in a pack and then it steps up 100 gems 200 300 450 so if you do really well you can just chain like chain drafts back to back it's actually a really it's a system that's really worth your time like this isn't a shitty monetization exercise at all and of course, you can get everything in game. But let's start building this uh, this deck. So, if you've never seen a draft, it's uh, pretty just simple to understand. You can see our three packs up here. We open our first pack, and these are all of the cards in our pack. We're going to choose one of these and hand it to the person on our virtual left. 
the rest of the cards that we did not pick. The person on our virtual right will hand us the cards that they didn't pick out of their pack. We're going to pick a card out of their pack and so on and so forth until all cards are depleted from the packs. Then we do it again with a second and third pack. Uh, and then we try and build a deck with uh, 40 cards based on whatever we can pull up. Is there a button I can hit that's better than this? Yeah, there we go. That makes these a little bit bigger. So what's our first pick? Uh, the rare is always worth looking at. A path of Metal, it's a red and a white. When Path of Metal enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to each creature that doesn't have first strike, double strike, vigilance, or haste. Whenever you attack with at least two creatures that have first strike, double strike, vigilance, or haste, transform Path of Metal, which turns it into a legendary land, um, which pings people for two or destroys attacking creatures. That's actually really gross, but that would put us solidly in uh, white and red, and I kind of want to see what other colors are here. Um, no, I honestly don't think there's a... That's gross. Well, it's very, very specific to transform this card, right? Like, the, this set in particular has a lot of creatures with extra shit on them, but that's still kind of rough to be able to make this happen, although it is really cheap. I actually don't think I can afford to pass this up, so we're going to try and make ourselves a red-white deck. What's red-white in Ixalan? Those are the dragons, right? There's probably other stuff I can do, but... You're gonna need some creatures with combat abilities. That's true, we need to have a look for that. Uh, so when the white and red, we have Forerunner of the Empire, which is the uh, the Ixalan, one of these Forerunners, all of them, you can go get a specific type of card and put it on top of your library. This one goes and gets a dinosaur. And whenever a dinosaur enters a battlefield under your control, it deals one damage to each creature. Now each is important. <laughs> Uh, because it also hits your creatures, but dinosaurs have a lot of abilities. They have an ability called Enrage, where if they take damage, it triggers off an ability. And pinging a 5-5 five five for one isn't going to kill it outright, but it is going to make whatever happens happen. Uh, we can see it down here with Overgrown Armasaur. When it takes damage, it creates a Sapperling token. That seems bad for four, or for five. No matter. Um, we're taking red and we're taking white, so I think we just get deep into dinosaurs. Probably, yeah. So let's grab Forerunner of the Empire, and he'll help bring us some dinosaurs into the party. It needs something to combo with. He could damage it for one damage it for one repeatedly. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, here we go. We have Frill Death Spitter. Whenever it, dealt, it deals damage, it deals two damage to your opponent, or a Planeswalker. So that's kind of what we're looking at with that ability. Um, does Forerunner of the Empire say in... Or, uh, does Path of Metal say in Rage or not? Nah? No, First Strike, Double Strike, Vigilance, and Haste. So... We need to find that stuff. Uh, Buccaneer's Bravado target creature gets plus one, plus one against first strike until end of turn. Well, we'll see if I can come back around to this. I'm actually really into Frilled Death Spitter right now. Allure Enchant would also work, but I don't think Rivals of Ixalan has anything like Allure. Uh, I'm not 100% on all of these cards. Uh, I'm just kind of playing casually, but I've seen a lot of these go by. Was Trample on that list? Trample was not on that list. We need to find some haste and some double strikers, I guess. Oh, this is fun. I haven't played for a long time, so some information might be 5th edition. No, you're thinking right, and there's uh, there's cards out in the world, or there's cards even in Arena that would do something like that. But uh, I don't think they're in Rivals of Ixalan, and specifically our packs are... Rivals of Ixalan, Rivals of Ixalan, and then regular brand Ixalan. 
But we're gonna grab Snubhorn Sentry, because it's a 0-3 for 1, so it's just a wall you can put out first turn. And then it ascends, which means if you have 10 or more permanents on the board, then it gets plus 3 plus 0, so it's 3-3. Three, three. The City's Blessing is just a, it's just a thing. You'll see it as we go through. There's no way I'm not taking this, though. I like cheap creatures. Um, Menace. Was Menace on the, the list for Path of Metal? It was not. Dag, we are just, uh... We're kind of not getting there. Let's take Buccaneer's Bravado. I think. Yeah, ten or more permanents at once gives you the city's blessing permanently. So it's a, it's kind of a race, but once you get there, you get there. Let's take Buccaneer's Bravado, because that'll give something for a strike. So maybe we can just put two of those out there, and that'll satisfy Path of Metal. Oh, here's something with haste. Uh, Stampeding Horncrest, which has haste as long as you control another dinosaur. And I hope that we're going to have a lot of dinosaurs on the field at once. So, let's grab that. Uh, Breeze and Freebooter's a pirate. When it enters the battlefield, it creates a treasure, which means you can sack it and get a mana for any color. It should... That should open some doors once it's on the floor. That's a very good joke. I'm actually quite mad about how good that joke is. Uh, we got a 4-2 here. Look at this boy. He's got some sort of fish lizard in his mouth. He, he hungry. He's protecting that thing. Uh, we don't want the Brazen Freebooter. Blazing Hope, exile target creature with power greater than or equal to their life total. It's possible for stuff to, like, go kind of infinite. And we don't actually have many spells, so let's take that. There's gonna be a dire... There's gonna be a dire need for that, I think, but... That's some versus KD sideboard, yeah. Oh look, all of these creatures are suddenly 16-16s. Sixteen, uh, get gone. By ideal. Um, oh, Stone Quarry, that's the red or white tap land. So, we're gonna grab that. I think the rest of that's gonna come back to us. Uh, there's a 3-4 dinosaur and a 3-1 dinosaur. Um, I think we go with the 3-4. Um, Tiani's Crown, sure, why not? And we don't have our colors in here, so let's just grab something. Uh, Naturalize. Let's, let's take a Naturalize off of someone else's table. Another Orska Raptor. Uh, again, not our colors, but I kind of want a gruesome fate for my vampire deck, so... That is the other thing. Uh, you do get to keep all the cards you're drafting. Which is just kind of how it goes in normal. I I'm speaking for the, uh... For the lay person. For someone who maybe doesn't play Magic the Gathering. I got another one, too. How about that? Okay. It's a whole new setup. We still need first strikes and tramples to get. Uh, was it first strike, double strike, vigilance, and haste? Oh, Strider Harness uh, can give something haste, so that might be the way we have to go. There's not a lot in here that I really want. So yeah, let's do that. Keep trying to mouse over the carts. Ooh. There we go. Charging Tuscadon. It's got a 4-4. Four, four. It's got Trample. It deals double damage to, uh, to players if it does combat damage. Uh, Sea Red 
gives you first strike. I think that's actually a fantastic play. So we're not uh, grabbing... We're not really grabbing creatures that do the thing we want. We're just gonna kind of back into it with enchantments, but that's fine. See, red does look good. I'm kind of wondering if I should take the other Snubhorn sentry, but I'm pretty sure it'll come back to me. Ooh, we're Suncrested Petrodon. I don't have anything with flying yet. I do so love flying. Oh, and it has Vigilance, so that satisfies our uh, Path of Metal. Um, da -da -da -da, Buccaneers Bravada, Mutiny... Rider Harness and Gleaming Barrier. We could also take Raptor Companion. Yeah, we actually don't have a lot of two drops, so yeah, let's try and get our early game. Get our early game, right? Uh, Shake the Foundation steals one damage to each creature without flying draw a card. Oh, that's also good for pinging our, uh, our dinosaurs with Enrage. Do I want to do that, or do I want to take the Snubhorn Sentry? I like the Snubhorn Sentry. Look at, look at this! Look at him! He's happy to see you. You've just come home. Ah. It's kind of a bird maw. That's interesting. We're going to take, take the Foundation, though. Um... Uh, we'll grab Raptor Companion, sure. And we're kind of running out of our colors, so... Grab Moment of Triumph, that's just a good pick for white. Do I want to take Fanatical Firebrand? I mean, it's the only thing in our colors. And it's got, and it's got haste, so that's good. Um, and... Now we're out. Oh, let's take Orska Relic. Orza Orzaka. Orazka. Orazka? Orazka. I'm just gonna sit here and say stuff for a little while. We'll take another one. Um, now we'll take the Raptor. We, gotta, we have three of those now. That's good. That's gonna be a nice little wall of meat. Um, target opponent reveals their hand, you choose a non. Let's grab that. The frill back. Release to the wind. Alright. So, what do we want? Ooh, Looming Altasaur. Just a 1 7, just a giant wall that can kinda defend itself. Uh, versus Bonded Horncrest, which is a 5-5, five, five, but it can't attack or block alone. Uh, I kind of just want Thick Boy here. Captain Lannery Storm. We are going to take Captain Lannery Storm. She's not a dinosaur, but she fucking makes mana every time she attacks and has haste. Yeah, we're not too good to hire pirates onto our crew. She is very jovial. She's She is excited to be there. She's just going to tear some shit up. Uh, Verdant Sun's Avatar. Legion Conquistador. Dual Shot. Dual Shot could be good. Do we want to, like... Take a third color and grab a bunch of green stuff, because Verdant Sun's Avatar is sitting right there. So if you play Verdant Sun's Avatar, you immediately gain five life, and then from there on, unless they murder it, uh, you gain life for every fucking thing that comes into play. And I kind of want that more than I want anything else on here. Well, Sunrise Seeker's got Vigilance. It is green, and that's what I'm wondering, if we can just, like, afford to slope into green in this last pack and just go, uh, go all three colors. Uh, this gives me an opportunity while I'm thinking to go over the other thing about 
Magic the Gathering Arena draft, so I'm not actually drafting with uh, a live group of people. They have... Uh, I don't know precisely how it works, obviously, but it's like an AI system where they... They have... Uh, they have computers that like take a first pick and then try and build a deck as best it can using algorithms so they're not taking colors that are completely random so if you're big into watching what cards are coming back you can still get those signals but mm, I really want Verdant Sun's avatar it's a super bad idea we might lose with this deck splashing for green but whatever <laughs> since when have I ever made good decisions uh, we could hijack the mic. I kind of want to hijack the mic. Oh golly, there is a lot of fucking... Ooh, dinosaur stampede. No, trample isn't one of the things for Path of Metal, but... That's still really good. We're, we're, we can't afford to not take that. Destroy target enchantment sounds really good. Uh, we could do more we can do more trample damage we are just having fun it's it's okay listen uh, if, if you're coming into this for tight plays I, I got a level with you right now I'm not a tight player I uh, I got into magic because it was fun and then I got out of magic because it stopped being fun because people took it way too seriously around me and now I'm back into playing it because it's fun uh, stormfleet pyromancer Fire Shrine Keeper, Demystify, Jungle Dever, Tomasco. I actually do want to be rid of uh, enchantment, so let's grab that. Encampment Creature. Pay 8 and tap. Sacrifice Encampment Keeper. Creatures you control gain plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. That is, that is an interesting card. That seems like that seems like it has a very specific degree of utility. Oh, it's uh, also in front of like the dusk rose. I'm pointing to my monitor, like you can see it. But the tent behind her, that's uh, Eliana, the dusk rose, the vampire queen. That's pretty cool. God, oh, Magic the Gathering art. Headstrong brutes, nah. Dinosaur Stampede. Ilya no, not Ilyana Senjir. She's the... Uh, it's with an E. I probably got the name wrong, I think. It's Elena or Elinia, something like that. Ilyana is a planeswalker now. Elena is simply a uh, legendary creature. We're... We're gonna go with First Strike. Uh, Enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus two, and has haste. Imperial Lancer has double strike as long as I had her name wrong. Okay. Sentinel Totem. Exile all cards from all graveyards. I guess we'll take green for Crushing Canopy. If we, like, really want to go and... <laughs> if we really want to have a go with more green. Uh, makeshift munitions. It's goblin bombardment f for anything. Uh, Ryle deals one damage to target creature you control. That creature gains trample until end of turn. Draw a card. That's a lot of shit going on for one red. I think I can go with that. Uh, dual shot. Irini Senjir is who I was thinking of. I don't think it's that either. Hey, Looming Altasaur came back to me. That's nice. Like Windstrider from the Morfolk deck. And favorable wins because I don't have a choice. Alright. So let's... Um, first of all, let's get of all, rid of all our blues. And our black so we can see how many cuts we have to make. Uh, white, white, red, white, 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 red, white, red, white, red, white, red, 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 I think that's good. So, 
Uh, no, I missed a black in there somewhere. Oh, there it is. You can tell, because you got uh, the suggested lands over there on the right side. How many cards did that put us down to? 52. So we got to make 12 cuts. Liliana is who I was thinking of. Oh, instead of uh, Irini. They do, well, you know, vampires. They're all white. It's all, eh. what do you want to do? So as much as I wanted Verdant Sun's avatar in here, and as I kind of like shat on a, I kind of shat on it trying to make enough green to make that justifiable, and this is like suggesting three forests, which isn't, I think, super good. So we're just going to cut green out of here too, which is a bummer. On the other hand, I have a Verdant Sun's avatar now. Um, that puts us at, what, 48? We can make eight cuts, I think. That's super doable. Uh, we can see our curve up here. We have quite a lot of the, uh, the bluer creatures up here in the, the right corner. The blue pieces of the bar are creatures. The orange pieces of the bar are non-creature spells. And we have a lot of one drops, which I'm not against. I like having cheap stuff to just play constantly. But this is rather a lot, and I feel like we want to get rid of some of it. Uh, I don't want to get rid of this one. Rigging Runner's fine. Blazing Hope, Demystify. No, I picked like all of these for a reason. Dual Shot, do I have enough things with Enrage to make Dual Shot worth it? Because that's kind of what I want to use it for, and I don't think I do. I think I picked up exactly one creature with Enrage. Yeah, I got the Frilled Death Spitter. Yeah, so let's take out that. I mean, in theory, we could take out two one ones or two ones with it, but eh, not willing to put all my money on that. Buccaneers bravado. I took that because I was worried we wouldn't get enough to meet the threshold for Path of Metal. Hey, B. Yeah, time. What? What even is that? It's a social construct. Let's uh, move that up just a little bit. The, I'm, I'm sorry, I was moving the chat on the OBS overlay so that uh, it won't be blocked by the word sideboard, which I am not even going to use. Welcome to our travels in the fourth dimension. Now we're staying in one dimension. It's all on the plane of Ixalan. That wonderful place where vampires, pirates, dinosaurs, and merfolk exist in a state of complete and utter disharmony. It's a lot of fun. Uh, do I really want Lannery in there? So I need seven fucking cuts. Do I need two Looming Altasaurs? Nah, I wanted the second Looming Altasaur because... It would have gotten me a lot of fucking health with Verdant Sun's avatar, but Verdant Sun's gone. Anything with one dimension is invisible to the human eye. Well, it's still in two dimensions. They're flat cards. We want Phil Death Spitter. I think we're fine with Dinosaur Stampede and Shake the Foundations. Hijack the mic. Well, I actually, like, kind of don't want Orzaka Relic. So, let's make that not happen anymore. I thought one dimension would just be infinitely thin. Yeah, it's just a, uh, a long sheet on which you need to, uh, on which you need to lay out all your stuff. Or is that two dimensional things? Yeah, it's a super thin string. There's a fantastic episode of Space Dandy 
We, we don't need three of these. I'm not certain we need two of these. There's a fantastic episode of Space Dandy that's all about dimensional uh, travel through the physical dimensions, where uh, Dandy is presumably 2D, and or presumably 3D, even though we perceive him in 2D because it's a television show, and he has a, had an ex-girlfriend who was a fourth dimensional being, and they just couldn't intersect. And then they had to... Uh, they got the bad guys trapped in a two-dimensional space that was just kind of flying through the air, which looked like a Legend of Zelda overworld map. Space Dandy's such a good fucking show. How many more cuts do I need to make? Five? Two. Let's try and get rid of stuff that doesn't uh, click for Path of Metal. Haste, First Strike, Poison Hope. Do I want to dump both of these Rapture Companions? Especially since I don't have any two-drop creatures? Mm, yeah, I want to keep one of them at least. We'll get rid of Lannery Storm and... Uh... Shake the Foundations. That looks good. That's probably not optimal as far as decks go, but I like what we've done. Let's see how it goes. I probably should have named it something. Remind me to do that when we come out of this. While we wait for an opponent, I'm going to crack open this delicious, completely unbranded root beer. If you're a root beer manufacturer and would like your product sponsored on these streams, get at us somehow, but you figure it out. Kites are just magical beings beyond our comprehension that we've trapped and kept on leashes. I'm 100% behind this headcanon. Of course, kites are, in fact, just sky trucks. Oh, this is alright. It's a lot- it's a lot of mana for an opening hand, but we have stuff we can play immediately, and it's been my experience that once you start mulliganing down to six card hands, it ends up getting whiffy. We have both our colors, so I'm actually super into keeping this. Just wave hello. Oh, it's another mountain. That's not ideal. Honestly, I've got no idea how card games work except cards against humanity. Well be. Um, they have 20 health. We're going to use our dinosaurs, like Snubhorn Sentry and the Imperial Lancer here, to knock that 20 down to zero. Oh, thank you. I I'm glad you think I'm a winner. I do try. Uh, so you can see the cards up here. They have that uh, symbol in the top right. That uh, white sort of sun looking thing. That means we have to play a planes. You can see the white sun on that card also to bring them out. And that's generally how it goes. You have a bunch of different stuff you can play, a bunch of different creatures you can bring out, and uh, we're gonna... I could attack with a 0-3. That would do literally nothing, so why, why bother? Some people do instead use their cards to make themselves have 1,500 or 15,000 health. Those are not fun games of Magic to play. Oh, hey, there's Path of Metal. Like, right off the top. Let's grab a mountain, I guess. What does Jungleborn Pioneer do? Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a plus one, plus one blue full creature token with hexproof. Sounds good. Uh, can I trigger that right now? No, I can't. And I can't hijack the thing, so... We're just gonna go to combat and not attack. If we attacked... First of all, this can't do damage because it has zero attack power, so that sucks. We have an Imperial Lancer, and Imperial Lancer could attack for one, but would probably be blocked by Jungleborn Pioneer, which has two damage that it gives out, and has to take two damage to die, which we wouldn't be able to do with Imperial Lancer. It would just get murdered. 
Or actually, both of them would get murdered because Imperial Lancer has double strike. But I don't want to, like, lose a double strike creature that early. We'll play Path of Metal, I guess. That's a good idea. It'll get rid of the token. I do like playing with Katie, but, you know, sometimes you see that you're going to lose in 30 turns, and it it, it makes you sad. You soldier on because, you know, play it to the bone, Antonio Banderas, but... Uh, sacrifice... Oh, destroy target artifact or enchantment. That's no good. Oh, and now, uh... Okay, so... They, uh, they took a piece of equipment and put it on their Jungleborn Pioneer, so this has flying now. It cannot be defended against by these things, because they are on the ground. Um... I tell you... What I can do... Yeah, I can do that. Uh, I can't bring out Stone Quarry, that's a bad idea. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to play Hijack here. Hijack lets me take control of a target artifact or creature until end of turn. I'm going to grab Thrashing Bronodon over here. Now, Thrashing Bronodon has a thing that says you can sacrifice Thrashing Bronodon to destroy an enchantment. So we're going to pay one and sacrifice Thrashing Brontodon to kill this flyer. And you're back on the ground like a chump. Wonderful. You should, food. Be eating is important. Self-care is important in all of its aspects, but get food in you. It usually makes you feel better, unless it's really, really bad food. All right. So, if I block this with Snubhorn Sentry, it's n it, it won't do any damage to me, but Snubhorn Sentry will die, and I kind of don't want it to die this early. What does this mean? Whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, which it will if I just let it go through, create a colorless treasure artifact, which means they will get one mana of any color. Um, which I don't want them to have. Nah, we're just gonna not do that. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna eat. I'm just gonna eat that damage, it's fine. I got plenty of health. The secret to Pad Thai is the sauce starts out super bitter, so you add sugar to it until it's way too sweet, then add vinegar to it until it's palatable. That sounds like a pretty good play. Uh, let's throw out the stone quarry. And we'll pay a white and one for Rapture Companion. Just a just a straight up three one. It's seen a squirrel in the distance, and its handler's just kind of trying to keep it on the level. Uh, I could attack with Imperial Lancer, but Snubhorn Sentry would just block it, and they'd bounce off each other. That's not what I want. So we're gonna go to no attackers. Uh oh, that's a 4-5. Uh, whenever Ripjaw Raptor is dealt damage, draw a card. Oh, that sucks. Soy sauce is basically vinegar, but not, so I use it as a vinegar substitute on Asian food. I wonder if Katie would like soy fries. Like fries with soy sauce. That seems... that seems gross. Uh, are we just gonna get rid of Raptor Companion for this? Make Jungleborn Pioneer not happen anymore? Uh, then they could just put this on another creature. Just give it another plus one, but yeah, I think I don't want to take any more damage from this. Katie doesn't even like soy sauce. 
But she likes vinegar on fries. Yeah, there it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So. Let's put another land out. We have another raptor companion, so we'll play that. And that puts us at City's Blessing, which means Snubhorn Sentry is a 3-3 now. And we can't really attack, because we would just lose any creatures we throw into that Maw. So we're just going to be on the back foot still. There's a difference between bitter and sour? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's what your palate's like, I suppose. I'm, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not some kind of Alton Brown over here. We're just going to lose our other Raptors companion. They've been very good companions that we've lost, like, immediately. I could use some cards to play. All I have in my... All I've been drawing are fucking lands. I need to make creatures happen. That's, like, the whole point of this deck. I have other ones in here, surely. There's a name for that, and you don't know what it is. It's a medically sounding term. The one where you don't taste, uh foods differently. A tastia, probably. Uh, I don't want to lose Snowcorn, but, you know, we don't have a lot we can do otherwise. Okay, here's a fucking card. Attacking creatures get plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Dinosaurs you control game trample until end of turn. So, we can send this out. It would get blocked by Ripjaw Raptor, and they draw a card, but we would get rid of Ripjaw Raptor. The bad part about that is we have no other creatures. So... But it's not like blocking this is going to be helpful. It would just extend our clock a little bit. Let's just go to no attackers. Anosmia is usually the cause in any case. Anosmia just means you can't smell right. I remember that from an episode of House MD. Um, I'm going to... Nah, I'm just going to eat four, aren't I? Yeah, sure I am. Oh, I should have read that because it explores when it does damage. That means it's that means either they're going to draw a land, which I don't want them to do, or they're not going to draw a land, which they haven't. Instead, they've drawn Verdant Rebirth, or putting it on top of their deck. And they get plus one, plus one. And now they have a 6-6. Six, six. This isn't going well for us. Um, not gonna lie to you. I've had worse games of Magic the Gathering, but this is, like, not very good. Let's put Phil Deathspitter out there. So I can at least deal 2 <laughs> damage to the other person. We're just gonna attack, I guess. Yep, that's a bad idea, but whatever. I'm begging you to block with a Dreadmaw. Begging ya. Nah, it didn't happen. Oh, you get to draw two cards, don't you? Because you get dealt damage twice. 
That's fine, it gets rid of you. There's some real weak tapping. Uh, yeah, they don't like go the whole 90. But I get that. They didn't want to like make that happen. And I suppose it wouldn't matter that much because they're the way they display them is in squares. Uh, yeah, tapping is what we're doing here with these cards. When we turn them sideways a little bit, that's called tapping, and it shows that they're being used, that that resource is used up for the turn. Uh, and in an actual game of Magic the Gathering, people will usually want you to tap your cards an entire 90 degrees, but here they're going with like a 35 degree thing because it's not particularly useful to cheat at online Magic the Gathering. Or if you can cheat, it's not in that particular way. Is that lethal damage? No, we have one left. We got we got one life, we have no resources, so that's great. We do get to deal two damage directly to the creature. <laughs> get to make that a 7-3. Well, we can play this, but it actually doesn't matter. Because they have two creatures, we can block creatures one to one. Which means we can block either the 7-6 or the 6-5, and either way they're going to do way more than one damage. Um... Uh, B, I'll, I'll happily... Yeah. Just straight lost. That's fine. Uh, I'll happily explain to you whatever's confusing you, but, uh... This is a kind of a complicated game <laughs> that I'm trying to play at a, a reasonably high level. Uh, just let me know what you what you have questions about and I will go through. I don't mind making my opponent wait a little bit uh, while I'm trying to go through. I'm trying to talk through my plays as I make them, but I appreciate that if you have zero knowledge of the game it's actually very difficult to follow. Uh, it's fine. I suspect I am going to lose a lot, and then we're just gonna go to Chroma Squad a little bit later. I'm just gonna have a little sip of this delicious root beer while we wait for them to look over their cards. Alright, what do we have? I uh, have a Raptor's Companion, we can play that second turn. Yeah, Tianali's Crown, we can play that second turn. Yeah, I, this looks way too much like the hand I kept last round. And that didn't go well, so we're going to redraw. Um, if you don't like your hand, you can redraw, but you only get six cards as opposed to seven. This is a little bit better. It's three lands, three creatures. I can kind of only play one. But that's fine, probably. I don't want to go down to five cards. If you start with just too few cards, it's very difficult to come back. Oh, and we're gonna draw a mountain first, so that's good. Oh! Gotta turn one play. Good for you. Uh, we'll grab this mountain. There's nothing else we can do, because nothing in our hand costs one. And we'll let them go. Play a mountain. They attack with Firebrand again. I take another one. And here we go. Excuse me, I was trying very hard to not belch into the microphone. There's our Raptor Companion. It is a 3-1, which means that if it blocks this 1-1 one, one creature, it will kill it. Uh, because it only has one toughness, it's it's a very easily knocked over. But they didn't want to run the Firebrand into it, which makes sense. 
Uh, let's play a mountain. Um, hmm. I don't know how I want to do this. Exactly, thank you. Left number is how much damage it does, right number is its HP. And HP gets restored at the end of each turn. And if I send this creature into this board, they'll probably block with the Firebrand. It'll kill both of us, and then they'll still have a creature out. I mean, it's a wall. Uh, it can't attack because it doesn't have a power, but it'll still... they'll still be up, and I don't know if I want that. Let's go with Rigging Runner. Chat box is getting cut out of the frame at the right. I moved a little bit over because I didn't think anyone was gonna cut the the strings on that. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, what the hell is that? Uh, so this is Trove of Temptation. Each opponent must attack you with a planes or a planeswalker you control with at least one creature you've combat a fable. Okay, so it does there is a lure ability in Exelon. I wish I had gotten this card. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, create a treasure artifact, which they did. Uh, this is just like another type of land that is expended entirely once it's used. Well, uh don't like this. Let's play... Yeah, let's go with a Looming Altasaur. Because I'm going to have to attack with one creature each turn. That's what Trove of Temptation does. At least one. And right now that doesn't matter because all they have is a 0-3. It'll block, but it can't kill this thing. If I have to attack with something, I would much rather attack with something that has 7 HP and is just going to stick around. Because there's not a lot of things that natively have 7 power. Well. I'm glad you're back! Did you run off to get food? I hope you ran off to get food. Um, well, how do we do this? Okay, I'll tell you how we'll do this. We're going to play Fanatical Firebrand. That's got haste. And we have to attack with at least one creature. So, let's go with the Looming Altasaur. They're going to block, and they think that we're not going to be able to kill them with this, but we can give it 2-0 in the middle of combat, and that will kill that creature, and they will be very sad that that happened. I think this is the correct play. Thank you, it was very nice. I thought it was a good trick. You have something to fix that? You have a lot of mana you can use. Oh no, I'm supposed to be clicking damage right here. So I guess you don't. Your knees are still, tra still traitorous bastards, but now you're in more comfortable clothes. I'm glad. No one should be uncomfortable while they're watching streams. That just doesn't make sense. Let me actually dump this so I can see the, the actual stream. There we go. Oh!
So they have spent literally everything they have for Star of Extinction. That destroys target land, my planes, which I need to play white stuff. And it will deal 20 damage to each creature, which is ludicrous overkill, but it will get rid of everything I have. That's a really cool animation they added. Welp. Yeah, I just got, uh... I just got Paul Blart Mall copped right there. Oh, they've finally drawn a creature. Okay, there's a planes. There we go. We can play a whole one creature. I was very worried. Uh, when Forerunner of the Empire enters the battlefield, I can get a dinosaur card from my deck. I will go do that thing. Um, and it should be something that I can play immediately. Um, Snubhorn Sentry... Raptor Companion... Can I play Orzakka Raptor right now? Uh, yeah, I can. Let's do that then. Yeah, I, uh, I have a lot of dinosaurs, yes. The, uh, this particular set of cards we're playing with is uh, called Ixalan, which is about a quarter dinosaurs. The other three quarters being vampires, pirates, and merfolk. Alright, so that's good. Uh, let's put this out. And that puts a dinosaur in play, which is going to deal one damage to every creature. It's going to kill their Imperial Lancer outright. Yes, please, do that thing. And we attack for one. If Paul Simon's... If Paul Simon's music was about the ocean, he would be a merfolk singer. Not wrong. want to do with this. Go with... Sure. We'll go with Tianali's Crown. We'll put that on Forerunner of the Empire. That will give this another 3 power permanently. So it will be a 4-3. Yeah. It'll take a damage right now. There we go. I'm seven year old now, apparently, so dinosaurs are the coolest thing. Dinosaurs are always the coolest thing. I don't know what you're thinking about. We'll attack with Orca's Raptor, because they'll block with the Aerosaur, but they both have three power and four HP, so they'll just bounce off each other. I'm forced to attack, so let's just do it. The next unset should have a card called Merfolk Senjir, and its card art will be a befanged fish person with an acoustic guitar. That sounds like a great idea. I can't wait for the next uh, unglued prototype in like 10 years. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Unlisted, that's good. Okay, there we go. That's, that's my precious daughter. Look at you. I think you're just what I needed. I needed someone to please. Play Stampeding Horncrest. It's a 4-4. It has haste, which means it can attack immediately. Uh... 
Forerunner of the Empire is going to deal one damage to everything, including Firebrand. Oh no, they're just going to sacrifice Firebrand, which makes sense. It's going to die anyway. Yeah, I'm, I would like to attack with one creature. I would like to attack with all three creatures. That's 8, 9, 10, 11 damage in one go. And they've quit. It makes sense. I understand why people do that. Because it would have been very challenging to come back from that. It still feels bad. So we're going to do, like, I could keep playing. It goes womp womp, and all the ladies and men, they know that everything is better with a fisheye lens. Everything is better with a fisheye lens. We've been going for about an hour now. Uh, and we've won one and we've lost one, and I think the 50-50 the is a good space to take. That's the that's the deck name, Black Rectangle, clipping through that card art, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So so this is in beta, um, a closed beta. It's very good. Um, it's, a, it's very good, and it's usually very solid, but then there's little things like that. It is great layering. <laughs> So we're actually going to uh, dump off of this. I'll, I'll play the rest of these games in my own time. I said good layering. I got to put these magical cards up on the computer game now with this layering. <laughs> uh, so we're going to quit. I'm going to bring the stream down for just a minute. Please take a moment to stretch yourself. And then we're going to come back with some Chroma Squad. So I will see y'all on the other side of that.